What's up and welcome to Ingenuity. I'm your host Paul. In today's episode, we are embarking on a let's call it an in-betweener project. That is a 2001 Subaru Impreza 25RS lifted on second gen Farser struts, some subtle solutions, trailing arm spacers, and some mad little circle track wheels with uh, 235, 75, 15 ATs on it. But we're gonna make it even better. Before we get to the fun stuff, I did have to bang out the uh, the rear wheel bearings and the dust shields. They had actually rotted out so bad that the parking brake was pulling through the shield <laughs> rather than holding the, the shoes against it. So I took care of that. There wasn't really a good angle to film it, so I just didn't. So now we need to address some of the things going on with the front of the car. Namely, we're going to be upgrading the leaking radiator with an aluminum uh, Mishimoto unit. We're going to be upgrading the, the clutch because it's damn near dead with a stage 2 unit from Exidi. Uh, we're going to be taking care of some leaking units like the uh, there's an axle that we need to take care of. There's uh, the valve cover gas and the headers and then we're also going to be taking care of some maintenance while we're in there like flushing the brake fluid spark plugs fuel filter that kind of thing so per usual we got a lot to do and not much time to do it let's get going Well, while the engine's out and everything's a little easier to get to, I'm going to get things kicked off with the lift. And we're going to start with the subframe spacers. And what that's going to do is push the subframe down, or the engine cradle, whatever you want to call it, and reduce some of the um, angle of the axles as well as the steering rack. And of course, since we're lowering the subframe, we'll also need to address the angle and the length of the steering shaft, but a unit from a second gen Forester should do the trick. You need the Forester um, cradle bolts. Now, obviously, you know, with the spacer in there, they're longer. Uh, the Impreza ones are too short, so you can't use the factory ones. I thought we had them, we didn't, uh, but we need to keep moving. So, I just quick made some out of 7 16 all thread, some nuts, and some, uh, some lock washers. So, um, tightened everything down. It'll be good enough for now, but as soon as those bolts come in, we'll be swapping them out. So, that's, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Get the right bolts, they're not that expensive. So now that the engine's in, now I basically just go through the process of finding out everything that doesn't fit anymore, like the fuel lines that are too short or the pitch stop that doesn't line up. So I'll just identify what we need to, order what we have to, and make the rest. No leaks, that's good. Don't like leaks. So, as you can see, the pitch stop mount no longer reaches because this is now lower. Now, normally what you would do is you would just get the Forrester version of the trans bracket, but we don't have time for that, so we're gonna make our own. Thank you. 
right, so now we get to the fun part of the build. We're going to be lifting this thing another two inches. And we're going to do it with these ADF strut top spacers. Uh, these are from Anderson Design and Fab. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to grab a set for yourself. They're steel, they're fully welded, and uh, they have camber correction built into them for when you're changing your suspension geometry by pushing your strut down. It basically, it functions like a body lift. You just unbolt the strut, stick this on top, bolt it back in, and you're done. It's that easy. So that's exactly what we're going to do. All right, it doesn't say to do this, but I'm paranoid. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of blue Loctite on these guys. According to the directions, um, there isn't a, since the top factory top hats are symmetrical, um, there's no uh, wrong way to install these. You just stick them on wherever. But when you put them in, uh, you have to have the letter facing forward so the logo is readable from the front of the car. That is how you orient uh, the top to uh, account for this is oh sweet we're in um, for the camera correction. That's how you get the camera correction. Alright, I'll pop her in. In case you've never seen an eccentric camber bolt before, this is basically how it works. So as you rotate it, the eccentric is then going to push on the top of the knuckle, basically going to push it out or in. And in our case, we want it tilted in as far as possible to give us as much negative camber as we can. So let's see which way it moves. So we're at zero. I'm not sure if you can see that. The top of the strut is starting to move in, so that's our, that's our negative adjustment.
Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next time.